The Bat family are Batman's closest allies, and most of them were at one time, or still are, his sidekicks. They have been with Batman through some pretty gruesome events, and naturally along the way they have endured some pretty severe injuries. And this video is going to go over the Bat family's worst injuries that didn't kill them. And although there are actually several members in the Bat family, this video is going to focus on Barbara Gordon, Alfred Pennyworth, Dick Grayson, Damian Wayne, Jason Todd, and Tim Drake. Barbara Gordon miscarries her baby. Now, we all know that Barbara Gordon was shot through the spine by the Joker and ended up in a wheelchair. And this was actually permanent in a lot of continuities, including the main DC universe, until it was of course later changed thanks to the New 52 reboot. But even though she is able to walk again, she was still put in a wheelchair and had to rehabilitate herself to be able to walk again, and of course then get strong enough to become a superhero again. So this is undoubtedly her worst physical injury. But she also suffered another severe injury which, in a psychological way, may actually be worse than this. In the Batman Beyond universe, Barbara Gordon gets pregnant with Batman's child, while sort of still dating Dick Grayson. It's a little bit complicated and I'll put a link in this video's description to another video that goes over the story in full. But the ending of this is that Barbara Gordon is attacked by criminals and they beat her up so badly that she miscarries the baby. It's a pretty dark ending to the story and an incredibly traumatic injury for Barbara. Not necessarily worse than being shot in the spine and put in a wheelchair of course, but losing a child like this is so horrific that I thought it needed to be included in this list. Alfred Now Alfred used to be a soldier and has served under Batman for many years, and on several occasions he saved Batman's life and even fought alongside him against his enemies. And for the most part the injuries that he has sustained have been relatively minor, or at least not of a permanent nature other than a few scars. But all that changed in Batman Endgame, when the Joker broke into the Batcave and faced off against Alfred, who did have a shotgun, but sadly the Joker was able to sneak behind Alfred and chop his right hand off with a cleaver. And this loss of a limb is undoubtedly Alfred's worst injury, and it really surprised me when I read it because it's such an extreme and permanent injury that you really don't expect it to happen to Alfred. But even with one arm, Alfred has still carried on as Batman's butler and surgeon, because it takes a lot more than a loss of an arm to rattle a man like him. Jason Todd's Torture The Death in the Family storyline is one of the most famous in comic books history, and we all know that the Joker kidnapped and beat Jason Todd with a crowbar, and then he killed him. But in the Arkham universe, this is slightly different. The Joker still abducts Jason and does torture him, but he doesn't actually end up killing him. He merely fakes Jason Todd's death, and then he tortures Jason for a full year in Arkham Asylum. Jason is tied up with barbed wire, so he is always in pain, and it gets worse every time he tries to move, so if he tries to untie himself, all he's doing is jabbing himself with the barbed wire and the Joker beat him with a crowbar and even branded the letter J onto his face. And Harley Quinn waterboarded him each morning, electrocuted him with a car battery and drugged him. And the Joker also used to let the rest of Batman's rose galleries have goes at torturing Jason, bruising him, cutting him and breaking God alone knows how many of his bones. And it wasn't just physical torture, he tortured him mentally as well by drugging him and then having his goons dress as Batman and beat him up, and then getting Jason Todd to kill them, which needless to say messed him up in quite a lot of ways. And he also let Jason know that Batman had gotten a new Robin and basically replaced him, and after going through enough of this, the Joker eventually broke Jason, and Jason not only rejected Batman, he flat out hated him. And Jason was even ready to tell the Joker Batman's identity, but the Joker shot him just as he was about to tell him, as the Joker doesn't care who Batman is. And this is actually where the Joker makes out that he has killed Jason. He recorded this whole scene and then sent it to Batman, so that Batman would think Jason was dead, whereas in reality he was still in Arkham Asylum and still being tortured. 
And it looks like the Joker would have actually kept Jason there forever, or at least until he decided to use him in some crazy plan against Batman. But fortunately, Jason Todd was eventually able to escape during the Arkham Asylum game events. He did this by getting help from Deathstroke. Well, I say help, he bribed him with a lot of money that he later stole from Bruce Wayne and transferred to Deathstroke. But still, he was able to get Deathstroke to help him escape. And then, of course, Jason went on to organize and lead the attack on Gotham that happened in the Batman Arkham Knight game. And Jason was planning to ultimately kill Batman. But of course, Batman was able to talk him around and Jason kind came back to the good guy's side. But still, the fact that Jason would organize this militia and abduct Barbara Gordon like he did really shows the psychological toll that this torture took on him. And the fact that he was kept up being tortured for over a year by God alone knows how many psychopaths, well, I think this entire ordeal definitely counts as Jason Todd's worst injury. Tim Drake is tortured and mind raped. Now, Tim Drake has suffered a lot of injuries over the years of being a hero. But I think without a doubt, his worst injury was in the Batman Beyond film, when he is abducted by the Joker and tortured for weeks, using powerful electric shocks and a series of different chemical injections, along with regular beatings, I imagine. And the end result of this was that Tim Drake was brainwashed into believing that he was the Joker and Harley Quinn's son. And the Joker had basically turned him into a monster, his own little mini-me version of him. Unfortunately for the Joker, of course, Tim Drake was stronger than he thought, and he was able to break free of his programming when the Joker ordered Tim Drake to shoot Batman. But instead, he shot the Joker, killing him. And that murder, combined with everything else that had happened, just broke Tim Drake's mind down. I mean, you can see him crying just uncontrollably. And it took a full year of counseling to get him back to a semblance of normalcy. And he was never able to be a superhero again. And undergoing this kind of trauma, especially as a child, means that he is screwed up for life. Yeah, he may have gone to counseling and they may claim that he had gotten over it, but you never get over something like that. All you can do is manage this condition because it will reoccur, there will be incidents, and he is going to have trauma forever. But unfortunately, it doesn't just end with the psychological trauma. You see, unknown to everyone else, the Joker had planted a microchip into Tim Drake's body that was rewriting his DNA and his memories and turning him into the Joker. And in this state, he turned into the full-on evil Joker and killed a lot of people, even taking control of a government laser satellite and blowing up people in their homes in a chase after Batman Beyond. Now, eventually, the new Batman was able to destroy the microchip and returned him Drake to normal. But again, he was severely mentally scarred and hospitalized for his physical injuries. And I think we can all agree that Tim Drake's worst injury is definitely being tortured, mind wash, having his DNA rewritten and becoming the most evil person alive. Well, come on, that is a pretty bad injury. It's the kind of thing that full on scars you for life. And Tim Drake will never fully recover from any of this and never be anywhere near the person he once was. Dick Grayson loses an eye. Like Batman and Barbara Gordon before him, Dick Grayson has also had his spine broken, and the worst such incidents occurred in the Batman Beyond universe. In this world, Dick Grayson and Batman go their separate ways and don't work together for a long time. But then they go out on a team-up mission, and Batman ends up accidentally using his cape to block Dick Grayson's line of sight. Now, this is an amateur move that he would never normally make, but Batman had gotten used to working solo and wasn't thinking of his partner. And so all the bullets went straight through the cape and they hit Dick Grayson, riddling him with the bullets. And one of these bullets gets stuck near his spine and he even lost an eye. Now, Dick Grayson does manage to be able to walk again after months of rehabilitation, but still, it's a very serious injury. And Grayson was never the same again, both mentally and physically. And throughout all of his recovery, Batman didn't visit him once. And when Batman eventually did see him again, all Batman said to him was, Do you need a new uniform? No apology for blocking his line of sight, 
not one word of concern asking how he is or how his recovery went. No, he just asked about his wardrobe. It was the final nail in the coffin of their relationship and Dick Grayson never spoke to Bruce Wayne again. And due to his injuries, he even had to stop being a hero. So I would say that this is definitely the worst injury that he has ever received. Though I do have to say, of course, that the Batman Beyond universe was later retconned and all of this was scrapped. So their relationship and the reason he stopped being a hero are very different. But originally, this is how the story went. Damian Wayne. Now, Damien's worst injury is without a doubt when he was hit full on by Darkseid's Omega Beams in the film Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. The only problem is, I did say that this video is only on injuries that didn't kill the Bat family. But the thing is, Damien did kind of survive this, as Raven was able to heal him. So this could count either way, but it's up for you to decide if this is his worst injury that didn't kill him. But there is also the time that he was fighting Blue Beetle in the film Justice League vs Teen Titans. Now Damien had just joined the Teen Titans team and was acting like an alpha male jerk, basically trying to assert himself as the dominant one of the Titans and needlessly antagonizing and starting fights with the other Titans and acting like an entitled selfish brat. And to the credit to the rest of the Teen Titans, they did hold back as much as possible. But of course, they eventually broke, and Blue Beetle lost it and fought Damian Wayne one on one. And though Damian was able to defeat Jaime Reyes, Blue Beetle's Scarab didn't hold back, and it lashed out and hit Damian with a plasma blast to the face. But luckily for him, Raven was on hand to heal him, otherwise, he would have had one hell of a scar on his face, and maybe even died. Now, I think that he would have survived this blast without Raven's help so I think this does count. So if you don't think the Omega Beam Blast from Darkseid counts, then this Blue Beetle Blast is definitely Damien's worst injury. I mean, Damien has been batted around and cut several times, but few things compare to a Plasma Blast to the face. And if Raven hadn't been there to heal him, he would have had one hell of a scar and quite likely gone blind. After all, Plasma damage to the eyes? Yeah, that's not gonna end well. And those are the Bat family's worst injuries that didn't kill them. Now, I honestly don't have a favorite as most of these injuries happen during some pretty great stories. But which one of these is your favorite? And are there any other injuries the Bat family have endured that you think are worse and should have been included in this list instead? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to quickly remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store. And to say thanks to all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.